finance the rest. So when you do the math and everything, my payment comes out to be. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, normally, I'm out there doing a modification for the car, um, covering some behind the scenes for BMW Invasion. But in this video, I wanted to basically deep dive into uh, what I exactly pay for my F80 M3. I know a lot of you guys saw the previous video if I was gonna get rid of my F80 M3 for the new G80 M3. And with that being said, I'm gonna be keeping it. So if you guys saw in the last video, I mentioned that my F80 M3 was a new car, so to say, but had 6,500 miles on it. And going back into that, it was a car that was an executive owned vehicle and I got lucky with that. Um, during the process of searching for the car, um, obviously I was looking for a specific color, a specific transmission, and uh, I really didn't care too much about the mileage, but I did definitely want to look for the right deal. When this deal came up to my phone, when I was looking through car gurus, I knew I had, some, I knew I had to um, reach out to the dealership and speak to somebody on the phone. And in that video, I mentioned that it was a car that was stationed or um, at a dealership in Minnesota. And obviously I live in Florida, Florida is quite far from Minnesota, and that's something that I had to either discuss over the phone because I wasn't going to fly there without you know, negotiating something over the phone because I didn't want to get screwed in the end. Um, with that being said, what I did was I spoke to a sales uh, rep, and we discussed some of the terms and some of the things that I was willing to pay for, and it went back and forth a little bit, and it ultimately um, got settled uh, over the phone. I didn't care about having the executive package because I know in the used car market to get specific details and you know um, I guess specifications you want or specs for the vehicle it's gonna be a little bit more difficult so those are the two things I wanted a manual transmission and also that color I did want to mention that this is not financial advice this is my way of sharing my experience with my buying process and if some of this probably helps you guys um, by all means, maybe use it. It's up to you guys. I'm not saying to use it, but also obviously listen to your significant other because end of the day, if you make a bad financial decision, they're going to be wringing your neck. But um, what I have here is pulled up is the contract for my vehicle. So during the time I was able to negotiate the price down from $65,500 down to $63,500. And during this process, it wasn't a big significant jump, but going to the used car market, it's a little bit harder to negotiate. But what really sold me on this deal, and if you guys don't know anything about the Geico's mechanical breakdown, I mention it all the time because I'm a big fan of it. And it's not a scam. It's something that I've used before on my F30. Um, I've, I've had a video about it down below. I'll list it below. But for that video, I mentioned that I had a F30 where I had some catastrophic failure on my rear brakes where it locked up. Long story short, I had about $10,000 worth of repairs that BMW wanted to charge me. And obviously I, I didn't need to go to BMW um, to get it fixed, but Geico's mechanical breakdown, they covered it because it wasn't a wear and tear issue. It was a mechanical issue and they covered it. All I had to do was pay $250 out of my pocket to get those expenses taken care of. So one of the things, like I said, um, that really sold me on this deal was I was going to be the first owner of the vehicle because um, it, it was an executive owned vehicle. Additionally, I was able to transfer or add the mechanical breakdown insurance onto this vehicle. And if you guys know, owning an M3 or a luxury vehicle, things could get kind of expensive out of warranty. So having that, I guess, extended warranty, so to say, and if, if you guys really want to know how much I pay for that extended warranty, $54. Yeah, you heard that right. $54 every six months when I renew my insurance premium. And it's insane to think about that they're covering this expensive performance vehicle for $54. And like I said, it covers it for uh, seven years and 100,000 miles. I could deep dive into that video and another video later on. Just let me know in the comments. So going back into it, I was able to negotiate down from $65,500 to about $63,500. And with sales tax, you don't pay sales tax in the state um, you're buying the car in. You pay the sales tax uh, where you reside. So obviously I reside in Florida and we'll be paying Florida's taxes. And that came up to be in total $67,210.
so I did put a decent chunk of change as a down payment. Um, for a lot of you guys that didn't know, I did have F30. And with F30, I did sell it and I did take that uh, chunk of change and I added another 10 grand to it and I put it as a down payment. So my d total down payment was 28,000 flat. And obviously when you go to the dealership, there's always these fees, uh, dock fees, um, transporting fees, license fees, license registration fees. Uh, so that all came out to be the total amount that I was end up financing was about $40,590 and 60 cents. So after going back and forth with the total price of the vehicle, um, one of the things that I did want to discuss with the dealership and also my sales agent was the interest rates. During the time in 2018, interest rates weren't as nearly as low as it is now with the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates. And actually today when I'm filming it, they just announced that they're not going to be raising the interest rates uh, that much. They're going to keep it to a bare a minimum to a zero percent. Um, I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but this is what they announced today. And today is uh, June 16th. So they mentioned that earlier today. But besides that, in 2018, interest rates weren't nearly as low as it is. I know that a lot of places for a used car or for this type of vehicle, they were offering 45 to 5% interest rates. If you think that's a good deal, I don't think it's a good deal. I always think you could do something better when you're negotiating with that. Um, I know that they do make money on the interest rates. So what I did was I went through various different uh, loan opportunities. I basically I contacted my bank, contact, contacted various different banks. And this is the key tip. Do your research before you go into purchasing a vehicle. Research of the car, research of what the values are, and also research on interest rates. So what I did was I found a credit union and to, to be honest, I can't find it now. I just don't know what the name was because it was about maybe it was about three years ago almost. So I found this credit union and they're offering me a 2.49 interest rate. And during that time, interest rates were going about 4% to 5% for this type of vehicle. So what I did was I sat down with my sales agent and also the finance manager um, and I, I discussed with them. I was like, hey, this is what my credit union's offering me. And to be honest, I wasn't even part of that credit union. This is basically all a bluff and, you know, because negotiation, it's all about bluffing. It's all about uh, seeing what they could do. They can move a couple inches forward and you could move a couple of inches uh, back and kind of like, you know, find a middle ground. So what I did was I told them, hey, my credit union and I showed them on my phone, they're offering me a 2.49% interest rate. I want to give you guys the business. How can we make it, this happen? And they were offering me a 4.5% interest rate. Me personally, I take care of my credit. My credit score is about 820, 830, depending on what month, because it just fluctuates uh, a couple points here and there. But I, I knew I was going to get a better interest rate than that. And basically, they went back and forth. Hey, I'm going to step out. I'm going to talk to uh, you know, his boss and see if they can make things work. I was like, look, you guys, we're almost done with the deal. You guys have opportunity of obviously closing the sale but I want to give you guys the business. It's going to take a little while for me to go back to call the credit union to set things up, but I want to end of the day, I want to give you guys the business. So it went back and forth for a little bit. I sat there and, you know, hoping that they could match it because it was just a, a seamless opportunity for them to get the sale and seems opportunity for me to, to sign the paperwork and leave because I had a 26 hour drive back to Florida. So after a while waiting in the, the office, they came back and said that, hey, they're going to be able to match it. In, in my eyes, it kind of blew my mind that they were going to match that low interest rate. And you really couldn't get that anywhere else. It was just a little harder to get. And um, if you guys are familiar with the used car market, you get a better rate when you buy a brand new car than a, a used car. I don't know why, but if you guys know, let me know in the comments. Um, but I don't want to bore you too much with numbers. Ultimately, I end up financing... Uh, $40,000 in change and I ended up getting a 2.49 interest rates a flat interest rate and when I saw that flat interest rate I wanted to basically make my payments uh, somewhat reasonable and, and moderate so I put a $28,000 down payment on the vehicle and I financed the rest so once I realized that they were gonna be playing ball and giving me that low interest rate and, and inflation these days it's about a 3% depending on uh, what year it is, right? Interest, uh, inflation rates fluctuate uh, depending on the economy, depending on whatever's going on in the world.
but I knew that if I was gonna get a solid 2.49 interest rate, I don't mind extending my payments for 72 months. Normally, your people finance for about three to four years. I opted to get the 72 months, and with everything being said and done, I was able to get a car payment of 608 and 13 cents. So $608 and 13 cents per month um, on a car that technically I'm the first owner and I had this great warranty through Geico. And if you guys are thinking about getting that warranty, you can't get it because it has to be for a car that is less than 15 months old, and less than 15,000 miles. One way to look at it to never settle for whatever they're, they're pitched at you, whether it's the price, whether it's the interest rate, always try to negotiate. You have options, you know, this is what's great about America, you have options out there. You're able to go to a different state or go to the next competing dealership and finding the deal that makes sense for you because ultimately your money speaks a lot more than somebody else that's not willing to play ball. So I do want to mention how do I offset my cost with having this car? Obviously 608 and 13 cents is not a cheap car payment. Um, it's not a, a expensive car payment, depending on how you look at it, right? So I know that you could get a lease car for like a Honda for like 200 something dollars a month or a Hyundai. Obviously that's more for economical. Me personally, this car brings me joys when I'm driving it. I have a lot of fun with it. And I was able to turn it into something, right? So with this YouTube channel that you guys watch and you guys hit the thumbs up and you like it, uh, about a few years ago, I would say maybe a year and a half ago, actually, yeah, probably a year and a half ago, um, I was able to get monetized. Monetization for a YouTube channel is pretty big for somebody that does this on the side. Um, it's not their full-time gig. So for me to, to be able to get monetized because of the support from you guys, I appreciate that. And I see it all the time, and I really do, because without you guys watching this and hitting the thumbs up or leaving a comment, um, this channel really wouldn't go anywhere. you know. And uh, I remember when I first started, it was... It was constantly at 170 subscribers, and I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing it because I enjoy making these videos. But uh, with that being said, being monetized on YouTube, it allows me to offset some of the costs for the car um, with the ad revenue I get, and also the Amazon affiliate links. So I did wanna mention on the YouTube channel, um, I do earn ad revenue when you guys watch the videos, when you guys see these ads come up, the pop-ups on the bottom, or whether it's the five second you know, uh, advertisement in the beginning, middle, or after the video. For example, um, for the past few months, I've been constantly getting a average um, revenue of $170 a month, which really isn't a lot of money. And it, it, YouTubers you know, on, on my scale make pennies in a, per video and, and cents and dollars for a video. Um, it's really when you get to a level when you're like Thick Whips or Obsessed Garage um, or you know other big YouTubers out there making a lot more money on affiliate links, uh, affiliate marketing, and also with their uh, ad revenue. So I've been monetized for roughly, I would say last year in April 21st. That's when I really became monetized on this channel. And since then, I've made about uh, $2,279.55 to be exact. And this is exactly what the YouTube uh, studio, which basically tells you analytics, uh, is telling me. Um, so I, ma I made about that much just on ad revenue and also my Amazon affiliate links. It fluctuates per month. You know, on average, I'll probably get about 15, 20 bucks a month. Uh, sometimes I know one guy basically bought a whole bunch of car cleaning products and he used my uh, Amazon affiliate links that guy appreciate a lot it doesn't really cost you guys anything when you use these links it basically gives me a small commission um, when you guys click these links and when you purchase something from amazon like i said it doesn't cost you anything it just takes more money out of amazon's pocket if you want to think it that way but for example so my car payment is 608.13 minus an average of 170 you're looking at 438.13 and then on average i'll probably make about maybe 15 let's say let's say 18 dollars um, a month off Amazon affiliate links. So we're looking at 42013. So my car payment, if you want to offset the, the money I get from Amazon and also uh, YouTube, it's about 42013. And obviously I do have to pay taxes on this revenue. So a lot of that is 
not 100% accurate, but I just want to give you an idea of maybe if you guys want, you guys can turn yourself or your passion, whether it's cars, hunting, guns, whatever you guys cooking, maybe you guys could do it yourself and make a YouTube channel of it because you could offset some of these extra costs or the cost for your passion by doing something that you like, do something that you love. If you guys find this video entertaining, helpful, useful, uh, let me know in the comments, hit the thumbs up. Um, like I said, the thumbs up is free. It, it definitely helps my channel grow. It definitely helps it get pushed through the algorithm so other people that are interested in the same topic get not gets notified. But a lot of you guys have been watching this since day one or watching the channel since day one. I appreciate that. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.